all our products are actually created for digital, meaning when we first create it, we are not thinking in terms of having it published because our core goal is to provide tools for coaches and small businesses to promote their products online with our workbooks. But we understand that there are times that you will want to print them either by demand from your own customers, or maybe you would just prefer to have them in print. To print one of our products, there's some work to be done before it's commercial print ready. Here I have one of our products called Win Your Mornings in 30 Days Workbook, and I'm gonna do this in PowerPoint. And if I open that book up, you will see all this and it's got 30 pages, not cover, not counting the cover. Now for print, the interior pages and the cover pages are separated. So what I need to do now is I need to go back to my file manager here and I'm gonna make a copy of this workbook. And I'm just going to put it as covers. Let's go back to the open file here. First thing I'll do is I'm going to delete this so that we only have interior pages in here and I'm going to save. The next thing you want to consider after taking out the cover is the page size. All our page sizes, because they are meant for digital and for in-home printing, we have sized them according to the actual paper sizes. But when you send it out for commercial printing, they actually print in large sheets and then cut down to size. So you need to give room for them to do that. In that case, we need to go to File, Page Setup, and change the size of the document. In Lulu, if I go back here, it tells me, I go all the way down here, there is a chart. It tells me that if I have a bleed, and I'll explain to you why we'll need the bleed option, and I want the planner to be in US letter size, I have to make the final document size 8.75 by 11.25. Let me go back. 8.75 by 11.25. And I'm going to click OK. And at this point, I'm just going to say don't scale. Now, it doesn't look like anything has changed, and that's okay. How we make sure that the document has changed size, first thing I will do is I'm going to add a shape here, and I want to draw this. And I'm going to go up here and change it to 11 inches and width to be 8.5. And that, and I want to make it constant. All right, so let's open up the format paint here and go to fill so that we can see the background. We're going to give it a little transparency so that we can be sure everything that we want is inside the bounds of this box that we have on top. Now to make it easier, I'm going to copy this. All right, and go to view, slide master, and I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to close this for now. And now you see the other pages have that in here and I can't, you know, I can't make any changes to it. And that's fine because I don't want to mess up that. And that's why I put it in the master. So now I can delete this and it'll be fine. When the people print it, they're going to print it exactly like this, and then they're going to cut off right here. 
they're going to cut around us orange borders. So as you can see, some of our images are going to be cut off and so on. We may want to finesse that a little bit. Now, the next thing is we need to allow for a gutter area. And this is where the binding will be. It's because our planner has less than 60 pages, even though they don't need it. But I do ask that we add some kind of spacing, half inch on this side and on this side. Knowing that, I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint. So I'm going to go back to my view and slide master. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to insert a rectangle and I'm going to put, I'm going to size this for the height really doesn't matter here, but the width, I want it to be an extra 0 0.5 inch. And I'm going to, whoops, maybe I should have done it all the way, all the way down. Let's make it, let's change the color a little bit so that, all right, we can see a little better. And the width is half inch, perfect. I'm going to place this right at the edge of not the page size, but at the edge of the orange box. And then I'm going to give it a little bit more transparency so I can see what I'm doing here. Any content that is inside here, inside within the blue and the orange is safe. But to be sure, I also want to put a half margin all the way around. Well, in this case, I'm going to copy and paste, and I am going to turn it around just to be sure, although it's not quite necessary, because we want all our information to be printed on a page. Paste it again, and this time we we're going to make it this way, bump it all the way up here and make sure that it's just right there. Copy, paste, and we're going to put this all the way down here. And now I'm going to group all of this group. And under selection pane, I am going to send all of this information to the very, very back. Sometimes PowerPoint does that to me. It doesn't like me putting stuff all the way back. Um, send, send backward. All right, now it's all the way back. Now that we've got this, I see that anything that's in the white area, it's not going to come out. It's going to be cut off and anything in the blue area, chances are they will be printed, but they can be at risk. Um, because they are only images, I don't really mind so much, but I do want them to look nice at least. So I'm going to move this within the blue area. Okay. I'm going to make it larger actually, so that it spans beyond. And just to be sure that it's going to turn out nice, I am going to insert a shape here to cover the, and I'm going to make it the same brown. Okay. Shape fill. I'm going to make it the same brown as the top there and format shape. I don't think I want a line. So no line. So I'm going to put it all the way back. Let's zoom in just so we can see what we're doing clearly. We don't want it to cover. We just want it to. Okay. And I'm going to send it all the way back. My goal here is basically to make sure that the 
the brown is completely brown on the top. This is to account for the bleed. Let me expand this a little bit. This is where the bleed, what we're talking about is because we have images that go all the way to the edge of the page and cut out, that's why we need the bleed. All right, so we want the images or even the background color to go beyond the page, just to be sure. And down here, at this point, I can see that the bar is gonna be cut out. So I'm gonna move it to the blue area. And once again, I'm simply gonna copy this and put it down here all the way just to cover all the white areas. That way I know that when they cut out, it will be seamless and I'll still have the brown part. Now this part, I may want to ungroup it. And before I, I'm gonna hold down my shift and unselect that. And hold down my shift and unselect that. And I'm gonna group this part, group. This is already grouped. So this graphic here is actually two groups. So I'm gonna select both. Whoops. Select both here. And maybe regroup. And I'm gonna make it come inside, inside the blue areas. Same here, whoops. Gonna make sure that you don't select that. So I'm gonna put it all inside the blue area. All right, that's good. Now that we've done that, we can close the master and we can check out the information here. What you want to see is the text itself. You wanna make sure it's in the orange section. So far that works well. And that works well too. And in fact, I can just view my slide sorter and take a very quick overview over here and see that all the text is not outside of the blue or teal areas. Everything looks really good here. At this point, I can export, but before I export, I just want to make sure that in my preferences under general, that the quality is going to be high. All right. And that's important if we're printing anything. That being done, I want to go ahead and export this into PDF so that I can upload it to Lulu later. And before I can export it, I need to remember, remember, remember to go back to the master slide and basically select our guides here and go to, make sure I'm in the home section and go to arrange selection pane and I am going to hide this and take that off of there. And now when I close my slide master, and now that I've done that, I would just go to file, export as PDF. I'm gonna rename it to Lulu interior size so that I know and export. I'll just replace because I've exported it before. And we are done here.